Hello, welcome back, it's Adam. And as we move along the storage services in Azure, it's time to learn about the services that allow us to put more structure to our data. So let's find out which are those services. The objective for today's episode is database services in Azure. That means we will learn about services like Cosmos DB, SQL database, database for MySQL and PostgreSQL, and lastly, SQL Manage Instance. In our last episode, we distinguished three types of data, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured type of data. Today, we will not talk about unstructured anymore. We will focus only on semi-structured and structured data types. And the first service that we will learn about today is Azure Cosmos DB. In the last episode, we talked about how semi-structured datasets can be uploaded by either users or applications to a table entities hosted by Azure Table Storage Service. In that sense, Table Storage and Cosmos DB are very similar. Except for the table entities, you have collections. Instead of Table Storage, you have Cosmos DB. But the difference between the two services lies somewhere else. One of the primary features of Azure Cosmos DB is ability to replicate geographically. This is because Azure Cosmos DB is available in many regions and data replication across those regions is as simple as selecting checkboxes. Once that checkbox is selected, your data will automatically get replicated across Azure regions of your choosing. And it's really that simple. One of the cool features of Cosmos DB is ability to not only read globally, but also write globally. So you can write to the closest data center available to your application and to your users. Besides its geo-replication capabilities, this database is also a low latency database. That means if you're operating on a small objects, it will return responses under 10 milliseconds. If you're building real-time applications, this might be the best choice for you of all of the services available in Azure. To summarize, Azure Cosmos DB is globally distributed NoSQL database service in Azure, allowing you to store your semi-structured datasets. Because semi-structured datasets do not require to follow schema, this is a schema-less database. And the third major feature of Azure Cosmos DB is ability to use one of multiple available APIs. The standard one is Core SQL API, which allows you to query your data quite effectively. But if you're building application based on MongoDB, Cassandra, Gremlin, Table Storage, you can very easily migrate to Cosmos DB and use those respective APIs. One of the cool things to note here is that Gremlin is for graph databases. So Azure Cosmos DB is not only a document database to store JSON files, you can also store graph data. And Table Storage API allows you very easily to migrate from Table Storage to Cosmos DB if you need that geo distribution or better performance. So this database was really designed to build either highly responsive or multi-regional applications, or both. So if you need that, Cosmos DB might be the perfect match for you. Next on our list is Azure SQL Database. This is our first service for storing structured datasets in Azure. This service allows both users and applications upload data to SQL Database. Within SQL Database, you define tables. Each table entity will have a specific schema that each row within that table will have to follow. Of course, within the database, you can have more than one table with its own schema. Once the tables are defined, you can also define relationship to represent the business relationship between the entities. So Azure SQL Database is your relational database service in the cloud. This is of course platform as a service, but sometimes also called database as a service. This is, of course, a structured data service because customers are using schemas and relationships to model their data to represent their business. Working with structured data has its benefits. And one of those benefits is SQL query language because databases like Azure SQL provides you with a rich query capabilities, allowing you, your customers, your data engineers, data analysts to explore data in pretty much any way. So they can join multiple tables, they can review all the data and return and extract that data and provide reporting capabilities for your organization. But Azure SQL is not only the database itself, it's a platform. 
and as a platform it provides customers with high performance reliable fully managed secure database service so customers can focus on building applications and very easily maintain security backups and monitoring for their sql databases one thing that i want to note here is that if you've been working with the past with microsoft bi technologies like sql server you might already know the products available in sql server family like database reporting services integration services and analysis services if you move to azure those products are represented as a separate services from the sql server family only azure sql database is a representation of sql server database and when it comes to other services they were either migrated as a similar service or recreated with a new design in mind and the last thing that I want to talk about is actually something larger, in this case, Azure SQL. It's a family of products with a similar capabilities. And the one that we learned just now was SQL database, which is based on a recent version, the most recent stable version of SQL server with a little bit less features designed for platform as a service offering. If you need full capabilities of SQL server from on-premise, but in the cloud, then Azure SQL also offers you a managed instance. This is much more pricey option, but it gives you full capabilities. So if there are some features missing in SQL database, you can use managed instance. Additionally, there's also something called SQL data warehouse. This is a version of the SQL server for massively parallel processing operations. So pretty much for big data data warehousing. And we will learn a bit more about this service in the future episode about big data processing in Azure. Additionally, Azure SQL gives you an ability to install SQL Server on a VM. This is, of course, an infrastructure as a service option, but it's also very close to platform as a service because you get all the cool features of Azure SQL, like backups, replication, security, monitoring, and automated updates on operating system. But if you don't like SQL Server or you're migrating existing applications, you might like an option with different database engine. And in Azure SQL, those options are database for MySQL and database for PostgreSQL. Those are an open source, very widely, very commonly used database engines on the market. If you're migrating existing applications, this might be the perfect scenario for you. So how about we do a quick demo now? Let's go to Azure portal. Again, to the menu on the left hand side, select create a resource and type SQL database to find the template in the marketplace for Azure SQL. In here, we can select the first option, SQL database, select create and fill in some basic properties. Select or create resource group. For me, this will be AZ900 SQL resource group. Next, we need to provide the database name. In my case, I will call mine AMDemo SQL. And now I need to pick a server. I don't have any server right now, so I need to select create new and provide it a name. I will call mine AMDemo SQL Server. Additionally, for each server, you need to provide admin credentials. I will call mine AMDemo admin and provide some secure password. And once I finish typing in the password, I need to provide a region. This is the geographical location of my SQL database in one of Azure regions. I select West Europe, hit OK. Next, I need to select the performance for my SQL database. I have few options to choose from, each associated with a different price. In this case, it would be 214 euros. So maybe I will pick something cheaper, like a basic or standard. Standard one is only 12 euros per month, which is fine for me. If everything else is okay, hit apply, review and create. And if everything looks correct, simply hit create and wait for the database creation. The creation itself takes about two to three minutes, after which you can simply press go to the resource to go to your database. In this case, you can review some standard properties like a server name, which is the address for your server, the pricing tier currently selected, or we can actually review what is inside by going to query editor. Inside of query editor, we can use a browser access to review our database. Simply type in the login and the password and hit OK. By default, out of the box, we cannot log in because our IP is not allowed on the firewall. This is a very secure service, so we need to add our own IP to be able to log in to this server. I will call this rule home and add my home IP address and save the firewall. 
once I see the message that the firewall has been updated, I can go back and hit again OK. Using the Square Editor now, we can review what's inside of the database. There are no tables, there are some views and no stored procedure. I will copy paste a small statement which will create a new small table in this database called movies with three columns, ID, title and genre. Where it succeeded, so we can see new table available for us to use. Again, I will copy a small SQL statement which will put some data into this table so we can use this query language to select that data. So let's run this and as we see, 112 rows were added. Now let's simply type select star from movies which will run a query against the database that will return all the data that we just inserted. You can review that data if you want, but I promise you it's all there. Now with SQL, we can do a lot of cool stuff. For example, let's return all the movies that are categorized as dramas. To do that, let's use where statement, then grab the column. In our case, the column was called genres. Let's paste that in and then use like statement which will return any row containing drama as a string within the genres columns and simply run it. As you can see, all the movies returned now have drama in the column called genres. And that's pretty much it. This is how easily you can provision new SQL server in Azure, input some data and query that data using SQL. Let me go back to presentation. To summarize, the database services that we've learned today are Cosmos DB, which is a globally distributed NoSQL database in the cloud, allowing customers to take advantage of low latency multi-master, which is perfect for building globally distributed applications and serverless applications. We've also learned about Azure SQL database, which is a reliable relational database based on a popular SQL server. We've also learned about a database for MySQL, which takes advantage of Azure SQL platform offering with MySQL database engine. And similar case for PostgreSQL. Azure SQL delivers all the cool features, but underneath it runs on a PostgreSQL database engine. Additionally, if you need a fully fledged SQL server totally managed by Microsoft, then you have an option with Azure SQL managed instance. This is more pricey option, but with more features, just like an on-premise SQL server. And if for some reason you need a total control over the infrastructure, then you can use SQL Server on a VM, which is fully fledged SQL Server on infrastructure as a service. And lastly, if you're working with big data, you might be interested with SQL Data Warehouse, part of Azure Synapse Analytics, which is massively parallel processing version of the SQL Server for big data and big data warehousing, but we'll learn more about it in the future. For this episode, always find the materials on my website in episode 12 section. And that's it for this episode. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. If you want to follow to the next episode, simply use the playlist or hit the icon on the side and see you in the next one.